Hello, and welcome to this video version of the Total Podcast with me, your host, Phil Scott, and my very special guest today. Her name is Velvet Sanchez. Now, just to give you guys a little bit of a backstory, when I was a graduate student in high in college, not high school, <laughs> when I was a graduate student in college, Velvet was in high school. She was a sophomore in high school. And so I was given the opportunity for this class that I did to do a documentary on high school students. So I had the opportunity to interview students in Arizona and Velvet was one of the students that I interviewed. So fast four years later, here we are. And so it's so nice to see Velvet again after all these years. So Velvet, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So I want to talk about, first of all, um, that I'm going to ask you the questions that I asked you during that um, interview that I had with you in high school. And first of all, I asked you and the other students I asked too, I said, what would you change if you were president back then? And you said that you would improve education. And you also said that you would work on trying to solve the homeless problem. Well, fast forward to today, and we're still having issues with both. Um, I know here in California, um, overall, we are ranked probably the lowest, <laughs> sad to say, a state this big with so many people. But I think we're at the, the bottom. We're like number 48 or something. It's that bad in the state. Um, and I work in education too, so I, I've seen a lot of this stuff firsthand, unfortunately. Um, but I see, I see the successes too. So it's not all bad, but California can do a lot better. Um, so Velvet, what things in your experience, let's tackle the education question first. Um, what things do you think that you would improve in education here in the United States? Um. I think in like high school is where a lot of people fall through the cracks um, because you get a lot of, especially with as many like people that are getting raised in like single, single parent households, um, broken homes. There's a lot of kids that just tend to fall through the cracks. They don't know what their options are. They don't know what their resources are, but also just not everybody's going to go to college and get an, you know, get a degree and go in that field. I think that high schools, well, in education just in general, need to focus more on setting up kids for life rather than focusing on gearing everybody to get ready for college. You know, like I. Like I said before, I've had to figure out a lot of things in my life, just simple things like filing my taxes and learning about credit and all that stuff that I've, I've had to figure out on my own. I didn't have anybody teaching me that. Um, and I mean, and, it, and it's hard because it's not really the school's responsibility, I guess, to teach those basic life skills. But I also think that it's a good opportunity for them to help people, um, especially people like like how I was when I was a teenager, where you don't have you don't have people teaching you those things in life. You're kind of just you know you have a lot of people in foster care and all that stuff. And I just like when I was that age, I didn't know the resources I had available to me. So, um, and you bring I feel up. Like you bring up a good point, actually. Um, when I was in high school, we had like home economics and that kind of thing. Um, but also, too, I, I didn't pick up a lot of that kind of stuff. Like um, I had like finance classes and like uh, trying to I can't remember the name of the class that I took, but um, it was a class that I took at the community college level before I transferred to a four year school where they taught us all that kind of stuff. So they taught, us, they taught us about the stock market and just budgeting and all that kind of stuff. So, but I learned that at the college level. I, they didn't teach us that in high school. And I'm sure there, there are probably high schools now um, that 
and and I, I think it depends on too what kind of school you go to. Um, I'm sure the better schools out there, um, whether they're charter schools or maybe even private schools, they probably some of those schools probably do a much better job of that. Whereas if you just go to just a typical public school, you're probably not getting any of that stuff or very little of it. So that you bring up a very valid point there. Now, also, I wanted to ask you too about the homeless situation. Um, you grew up in, Ar in Arizona and Yuma. Um, you've lived in Arizona, you've lived in Texas, and now you live in Florida. Um, what are some of the similarities and differences that you've seen in, in, with that issue in the places that you've lived and that you live now? And um, what ideas do you think may help solve the problem? I know we're, we're dealing with the difficult economy now, and that's not helping things at all. So what things do you think we could maybe try to do to make things better? Oh, that's hard. Uh, uh, I think for homelessness, I think it's just really hard. I mean, because even if you, like, if you have somebody who just hit hard times and now they're homeless, like people are like, well, why don't they just get a job? And I don't think people realize how hard it is to actually get a job. <laughs> like, yeah, you have to have a phone, you have to have an address, um, or you know, you have to have rely. They want you to have reliable transportation. Um, but even like, they don't have access to like clean clothes and like all that stuff to even just go to an interview. Um, and it, it's just there's so much behind it. Especially like my brother was homeless um, most of his, well, actually all of his adult life. And like, it was hard for us to keep track of him. Of course he had his mental health problems. Like it was hard for us to keep track of my brother. We like, we would lose him for like months. <laughs> like we wouldn't be able to find him. Um, there, like there was a period of time. I think it was, I don't know how long it was, but my dad ended up calling like all these, he was calling all the hospitals in California to find him because we just hadn't heard from him in a long time. And he was always really good about checking in with somebody at some point. Um, but I, I mean, so for us to be, it was hard for us to keep track of one person. You know, I just think of all the struggles that the homeless people face um, because not, you know, and then there is a lot of like homeless people that do have mental health issues. Um, and I, I don't know. That's just such a, that's just such a hard answer because people don't realize all the struggles it comes with. Like I've had people ask me like, well, your brother was homeless. How come he didn't live with you? It's like, well, he didn't want to like, I've yeah, had you, him live with me before and you, yeah. you, you can't force somebody to do something that they, do, they don't want. So right. you have like all these people with the mental health issues that either don't have the support. They don't want to, they don't want the help or whatever, but then you have these people who just hit hard times and it's hard for them to find a job because they don't have ID. They don't like, you know, like even my son's girlfriend, she wasn't homeless, but it was, it was hard for her to just get like a state ID um, and to obtain like the things that like her birth certificate and her social security card just to get it. <laughs> was a big struggle for her. And then I think of like people who are homeless and don't have help and don't have the resources to even like, don't have a vehicle to go and obtain these things. Um, I, th I, th I don't think people realize how hard that is. And I think if there, if it was, I don't, I don't know the answer. Like if it was just, if people would just not, or, and then you have the people who have like bad records like oh we can't hire you because you're a felon you have a felon a felony from 15 years ago 10 years ago it's right. like well they could not be you know like if that was their only charge and they changed since then like you're still holding that against them and it's hard for them to get a reasonable job that's you know that that's not minimum wage where they could actually support themselves on so i just i think there's there's a lot of issues in this country that yes. need to be worked on. Um, so I, I, with the homeless, I don't, I don't know. There's just so much there that that people could be judgmental on it, but they, there's, 
It's not that they're all lazy. I mean, some of them, yeah, some of them are lazy. They don't want to work. Um, but a lot of them, like, they just fell on hard times. There's this guy I follow on TikTok. His name's Jimmy Darts. He's like amazing. But he'll go around and he'll like um, give people like $500. Like he'll be like, oh, we pay hopscotch with me and they'll play hopscotch with him and he'll give them $500 just for being nice. And then, he, some, but sometimes he gets deeper into these people's stories because a lot of times it'll be like a homeless person or somebody living out of their car and they're like, you know, they had a health issue that caused them to lose their job and now they're homeless. Well, now they're, they've gotten better, but now they can't get a job. So it's just like, there's so much that's out there that people don't realize that works against people doing things, you know, and it's hard. A lot of times it's hard to get out of those. So I don't know. And I feel like now it's harder than ever because just inflation, cost of living, everything is ridiculous right now. Right. Like, yeah, I make a like I make an okay amount of money money and it's I mean I don't make a ton of money but I make enough like where I shouldn't be struggling as much yeah it, things are just absolutely ridiculous now well I want to end things by saying um please do my viewers here um please listen to the audio version of the podcast because we go into so much more um, about Velvet's life and what she's been through. And it, it's just an incredible story. She's been through a lot. And so um, please do listen to the total podcast with Phil Scott. It's on Anchor FM. It's on Spotify. It's on Apple Podcast. So please do listen to the audio version. It should be episode, I believe it will be episode number 94. Um, so please do, please do listen to that episode. You'll, you'll learn a lot about Velvet. She's an incredible person and, um, you'll enjoy it. You'll get a lot out of it. So Velvet, thank you so much for doing the video portion of the podcast. I appreciate it. It was great to see you again. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So with that, everyone, that is the end of this episode, this video episode of the Total Podcast with me, your host, Phil Scott. Everyone stay safe, be careful out there, take care of one another, and we will talk again soon.